So in this problem, we have a payment of $2,000 that's due today and another one of $3,000 that's due in three years. So let's set up our time diagram. So the, the uh, original uh, payment plan is going to be set up so that we show that the original payment of $2,000 is due today and in addition to that another one of $3,000 is due in six years time so let's throw that on the top part of our time diagram for the second payment. Interest rates are 6% compounded quarterly so 6% compounded quarterly means that we've got 6% calculated four times a year so the interest rate per quarter is going to be 0 0.06 divided by 4 or 1.5 percent per quarter. This is very very important so I is equal to 1.5 percent per quarter. We're going to replace uh, these two original payments with new payments and our new payments we're going to put them at the bottom part of our time diagram. Our new payments are going to be two equal payments so we'll use X X dollars uh, paid in two years so one of uh, in two years we're going to make a payment of X dollars and in, in four years we're going to make another payment of X dollars. So there you have it. So these two payments of X dollars are going to be used to replace the original uh, payments of $2,000 and $3,000. Now, um, taking a common sense approach, if I strictly assume that uh, interest was 0% and that time was not worth any money and time did not have any value, I would have originally 2 plus 3 or $5,000 and uh, if I divide that $5,000 by 2, my two equal payments would be $2,500. So that's assuming that um, time does not have any value. But time does have any val some value. In fact, we're assigning it a value of 6% compounded quarterly. In order to solve this problem, we um, uh, know that uh, we're going to be picking a focal date. And in this case, I'm going to select this date as focal date. Now, the cool thing about compound interest is that it really doesn't matter which focal date you select everybody will get the same answer when it comes to compound interest. Choosing this uh, four-year time as the focal date allows me to have positive uh, exponents on the variables uh, x and x. I have got two payments of x dollars. I don't, I'm not too worried about positive, negative exponents on the numeric quantities, but I need to find the equivalent value of the $2,000 at the year four, plus I need to add to that the equivalent value of the $3,000 discounted from six years to four years. So you know that I'm going to be multiplying by um, 1 plus i to the positive n on the $2,000 and for the $3,000 I need to discount it because I'm going to a period that is two years earlier. So I'm going to be multiplying by 1 plus i to the negative n for the um, uh, $3,000. And I'm going to set that equation of values equal to the equation for the new payments. So for the new payments, I only need to compound interest, add compound interest on the first payment for a period of two years. And notice that my arrow goes to the future. So that means that I'm going to be multiplying by 1 plus i to the positive n. And for the second one, I don't have to move it at all. It's just going to stay put. So I'm going to say that the value of the original payments should equal to the value of the new payments at the focal date. And so coming up with the equation for the value of the original, uh, keep in mind that we have two formulas that we're going to use. Sum is equal to principal multiplied by the 1 plus i to the positive n exponent when we are moving to a future date and principal is equal to sum multiplied by 1 plus i to the negative n. This is known as a compound discount formula and that's when we are moving to a um, uh, earlier date, when we're moving amounts of money into an earlier date. So going back to this timeline here, what we need to do is to figure out what the number of interest periods are. Remember that it's quarterly periods and so from for the $2,000 I need to move it four years so 4 times 4 quarters, n is equal to po uh, 16. n is equal to positive 16. And to go from 6 years to 4 years on the $3,000, I'm 
I need to discount it for um, two years, and two years will give me uh, n is equal to negative eight quarters, uh, for two quarters, four quarters in a year. And again, on the x, I'm going to be moving it from two years to four years, and so that's going to be a two-year time period. Two years will have n is equal to eight quarters. And so now we're ready to come up with our equation. We're going to say that two thousand dollars multiplied by one plus uh, one and a half percent per quarter for let me see now sixteen quarters plus the three thousand dollars multiplied by one plus point zero one five and the exponent's going to be negative eight is equal to x dollars now and now I'm on the opposite side of the time diagram I'm dealing with the new payments x dollars multiplied by 1.015 to the power of positive 8 plus x dollars. You'll notice that this, this one doesn't move so I don't have to multiply it by any compound interest factor. So I've got a very simple equation. Let's set that up and solve that equation. And so working this out, um, again, I'm going to t show a step-by-step -step approach. So I'm going to figure out the compound interest factor. So in my next line, I'm going to have $2,000 multiplied by the compound interest factor of 1.268 and so on. And uh, I'm going to add to that uh, $3,000 multiplied by the compound discount factor of 0 0.88 seven seven one one and so on you'll notice that I threw in those little squiggles there that's because each one of these calculations I'd like you to store them in one of the memories of your calculator and if you've got a financial calculator you'll probably have the BA2 plus calculator store this in memory one store that uh, factor in memory one store this factor in memory two and that's going to be equal to x multiplied by let me see now when I work out the uh, annuity uh, compound interest factor for 1.015 to the power of positive 8, I'm going to have a value of 1.12649 and so on. And I still have the plus x. I'm going to ask you to store that third factor in memory 3. Memory 3. So you've got three different values in the memories. Um, taking a look at the value in memory 1, this is telling us something. This is telling us that the $2,000 will be inflated by 26%, so that the uh, $2,000 will have a value of 126% of $2,000 at the focal date. This tells you that the $3,000 will only be worth 88% of the $3,000 two years in advance of its due date. So now I think what we can do is solve these numbers, uh, solve each of these numbers. 2,000 multiplied by this number that's in memory 1. This will give us a value of 25.37 and 97 cents. So that $2,000 is worth uh, 25.37 at year, let's see now, at our focal date, which is year 4. So at year 4, that $2,000 will now be worth 25.37.97. Plus, I'm going to add to that the second number of $3,000, and this will be a discounted amount, $26.63 and 0.13 and so on cents. So again, um, what we should do is maybe overwrite, just store the first number in memory. By pressing store memory 1, you will overwrite the previous contents. So store this in memory 2, and that's going to be equal to x multiplied by 1.126 and so on plus another 1x. That 1 coefficient of x is assumed to be there. So really we don't have 2x's, we have a little bit more than 2x's on the right hand side of the equation. We have 1.12x's plus another 1x. So what you should do is recall memory 3 and add 1 to the contents of memory 3 so that we have an x multiplied by 2.126 and so on. So now you should put this number in memory 3. On the left hand side you've got $2,500 plus the $2,600. That adds up to 52.01 and 104 cents. What I'm going to ask you to do is to store this in memory 1 again. 
So overwrite memory one. We don't need those earlier numbers anymore. So 5,201 cents is the equivalent value of the two debts, the two original payments, and we're solving for x here. So the way to solve for x is we're going to divide the left side and the right side by 2.126 and so on. Remember that 2.126 is all in memory three. So we're going to divide by 2.126 and everything else that goes along with that. So in other words, uh, recall one divided by recall three. Remember that that's in memory three. You will get a value for x. x works out to be $2,445.86. Now you can round that off to the nearest penny. So you'll make two equal payments of, um, of $2,445.86 at the end of year two and year four.